$100,000 worth of funding for project uh, implementation, and then the next 10 communities have access to up to $50,000 for project funding. Um, one important thing to know, other than the no local cost share, is that there is uh, up to 25% advance available for all projects. So once a project commences, there is the opportunity to have an advance payment for you know milestones of, of that project. Next slide. So today um, we'll be talking specifically about benchmarking, which is one of the 10 high impact actions. But as you can see from the list on this slide, there are a number of other high impact actions. So if your community is uniquely interested in uh, implementing any of the other impact actions on the list, uh, do reach out to your coordinator so that you can get started on implementing those actions as well. Next slide. Next slide. So um, the benchmarking action requires a local government to adopt a policy to report the energy use of municipal buildings on an annual basis. Um, there are some nuances for larger communities, but um, at its basis we're talking about a local law, an ordinance, or um, a resolution to report the energy use of municipal buildings using specifically EPA portfolio manager, which we'll be talking in depth about uh, throughout the presentation today. Next slide. So for small communities, and my apologies, I know there's a lot of words on this slide, but for small communities, which is anything under 40,000 in population, as well as counties, uh, a community must submit the copy of the adopted legis legislation, again, that's the local law, the ordinance, or the resolution, that requires um, all municipal buildings that are over 1,000 square feet or larger. Um, you need to benchmark, which is what we're going to be reviewing today, which is the um, EPA portfolio exercise of, of getting all your building energy use and um, other kind of uh, building use information like waste or water into the EPA portfolio manager platform and then also report on an annual basis certain statistics on uh, the municipality's website. So those are the requirements. So that, that would necessitate the community to adopt uh, that legislation and submit it. Um, but we're also going to be talking about at length the exercise of actually going into EPA Portfolio Manager and logging in your information. But for this program specifically, uh, NYSERDA is looking for the certified copy of that resolution to demonstrate that the benchmarking action has been completed. And again, this is only for, uh, for small communities. This is only for municipally owned and occupied buildings that are 1,000 square feet or larger. And there are some opportunities to grant exemptions, uh, which we'll be talking about later in today's webinar. Next slide. For large communities, and this is anything over 40,000 in population with the exception of counties, uh, the community must submit a copy of the adopted legislation, uh, again, local law, ordinance, or resolution, uh, that would include a requirement for the owners of commercial and multifamily buildings over 25,000 square feet or larger to comply with the same requirements of the smaller uh, community resolution. So both benchmarking and reporting uh, for, for those buildings. So um, certainly this is something that is very ambitious, and so we encourage larger communities to consider this so that the private community, um, the private industry community can also reap the benefits of benchmarking. Next slide. So there's a lot of technical assistance available to you as a community. Not only will your locally based clean energy coordinators provide assistance in getting the uh, language right for the resolution and other services which we'll touch upon, but uh, um, you know, they're also digital. Uh, there's a toolkit for benchmarking available on NYSERDA's Clean Energy Communities website that you can uh, check out after today's webinar. And there's also a lot of information and resources on the EPA Portfolio Manager website, um, which Juan will be reviewing shortly. So there's a lot of help for this action. Next slide. Next slide. Oh, and that is it for me. So I'll uh, hand it over to Juan now to talk a little bit more um, in depth about uh, the portfolio manager platform. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was uh, really Hi, good. thank you. Can you hear me? Well, I sure can. We sure can. Okay, good. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, thank you for inviting EPA to present on Energy Source Portfolio Manager the technical assistance and resources. And I like to say that Portfolio Manager is a turbo tax for building energy benchmarking, making it easier for everybody to benchmark. Next slide, please. So 
So EPA's uh, Energy Star measurement and tracking portfolio is free. It's online and secure resource for benchmarking all types of uh, properties and buildings. It enables you to track energy intensity, utility costs, greenhouse gas emissions, waste and material, and monitor changes in your building over time. It is both a management tool and a metrics calculator, and as a management tool, it can be used to assess whole building energy and water consumption, waste and materials management, track changes over time, track green power purchases, share and report data with others, create reports, or apply for the Energy Star certification. And as a metric calculator, Portfolio Manager will help you organize and inform the energy management strategies. And the reports will be easily generated uh, of energy water consumption and figures and waste uh, materials management figures and greenhouse gas emissions and Energy Star scores. Any type of building can use a tool to generate energy use intensities or energy use per square foot value, annualized from the most recent 12 months of data, input, or other popular metrics, which include weather normalized energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and energy star score from 1 to 100. And to access um, Portfolio Manager, here's the bottom of the web of this uh, slide. It's energystar.gov slash Portfolio Manager. Next slide, please. Now, EPA's Energy Star Portfolio Manager is an industry standard for benchmarking, tracking, and reporting energy savings. In fact, the market has relied on portfolio managers to benchmark over 40 billion square feet of commercial square space and over 450,000 buildings, closing to closing in all half of the commercial floor space in the United States. And the numbers are impressive, but if the trends are successful strategies behind it, then I'll ask you to review the snapshot of this uh, slide. Uh, school districts are leading the change. Companies with large portfolios are leading the way. Local and state government policies are driving the activity through local mandates. Energy data access is essential for instituting energy benchmarking, energy management, and improvements. And water tracking is growing because of its importance of drought. Uh, and so we encourage folks to use uh, Energy Star Portfolio Manager. Next slide. So we have lots of guides for building a strategy for energy management programs. So you want to save energy, but you don't have, know how to start or where to begin, or perhaps you are, you've been managing energy for years and you'd like to take you know, the program to the next level, we have uh, EPA strategic management guidance and tools on our Energy Star website also. Next slide, please. It is important to note that all buildings can be benchmarked no matter the type, no matter whether they can earn the score from 1 to 100. And by tracking energy use, you can identify underperforming buildings, set investment priorities, and track improvements. Even in the absence of a 1 to 100 score, you can compare buildings to the national medium or set your buildings in order to set targets and goals. And with the limit resources and capital, you need to a strategic focus through your re of your resources in order to achieve the greatest benefit from energy efficiency projects. Benchmarking can help you understand which of your buildings can deliver the largest savings and where you should focus your efforts as your energy management activities are underway. Next slide, please. So these are the property types that are eligible for Energy Star score and compare themselves to similar buildings across the country. A property might have multiple, uh, might have proper, uh, sorry, multiple property uses. So the building has to have more than 50% of that property use to, and the gross floor area to uh, use this uh, Energy Star score from one to 100. Next slide, please. So this is a general data that most property types need to start benchmarking. Usually, the, the hardest part for most folks to start benchmarking is gathering this data. Things like uh, the address, gross floor area, other details of operation of the building, and of course, the, the hardest thing to track is sometimes the energy and water bills. Next slide, please. So you can input the data manually, you know, for each building. Uh, to enter a single or edit single properties is a really good way. Uh, you could upload through spreadsheets of data. If you have multiple properties, usually through an Excel sheet, uh, we'll provide the template for you, and you just have to use that template and upload it. Or you could also use web services. These are usually used by ESCOs, energy service companies. Next slide, please. So here's a snapshot of our uh, portfolio manager introduction page. So this is the main portal page, and here you could 
uh, create a secure account, and it tells you how to register. At the bottom uh, right, there's a button there that says register now. Uh, you can also find important information like uh, you can go to our webinars, which we have a monthly webinar called Ask the Experts, which are given every Wednesdays at 12 noon for 30 minutes, and you can ask any questions that you might have. There are also links here to data collection worksheets, so if you have a specific building that you need to benchmark, a library or school, a firehouse or police station, you could uh, download this worksheet and it'll tell you exactly what you need, what kind of information you need, and it gives it in two formats, either a PDF or a Word file. You can find resources to find ways to save energy, like I said. If you're just starting or you have started and need to know more tips, this is a good way, good place to find out. You can find financing, which you provided from your state government or stuff. Or you can earn recognition certification for your building. Next slide, please. So this is our main page on when you create an account portfolio manager. And as you can see at the top right-hand corner, there's a help button. But in this, you could, but you could get more, get fact sheets and quick reference guide for other information on how the tool works. Search frequently asked questions. You can browse or search our frequently asked questions. Check the glossary because there's a lot of definitions that you will need to become familiar with, exactly when they're telling you uh, what kind of information the tool is requiring you to input. Look up terms throughout the use of Portfolio Manager. You could take or view training. You could sign up for sessions, record. Uh, you can view live sessions or recordings in a wide variety of topics. You can send questions to our staff with attachments, and these questions are usually, you, this is the way that we like to submit our questions from our public is that they submit it through this format. That way it gets logged in because maybe sometimes a lot of people have the same type of question and we can log it in and help everybody out all at once. And if you exchange data via web services, you can check out information to get updates and technical references. Next slide, please. So Energy Star is also on our social media. We have a Facebook account, we have a Twitter account, we have a YouTube channel, and on our YouTube channel we have a lot of our Energy Star training online. Next slide, please. So this is just to recap our technical assistance and resources. Here we have a website, uh, energystar.gov slash building helps. It has an extensive list of frequently asked questions. We have additional uh, portfolio manager training, and that's the website at energystar.gov slash building slash training. And it gives you step-by-step -step documentation on PDF. You can access our recording uh, webinars and our training. We have also short videos, five-minute videos, a specific thing of how to enter a building, how to enter uh, energy data, how to do uh, campus, stuff like that if you have that those situations. You can register for regular webinars or view prior webinars that have been recorded. And uh, to know more about the technical stuff, the white papers of how we developed the score and everything, you can go to our bottom website there. Next slide, please. So this is my contact information. If you have any other additional questions or stuff like that, I could definitely, I'm out here to help you out. Uh, any need that you might have, just shoot me an email, call me anytime, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you so much, uh, Juan, really appreciate it. Um, okay, our next speaker is Amanda Mazzoni, and Amanda, before we launch into your very interesting presentation, I just want to say, you know, we are aware that some people have had sound issues, uh, but from the chat, it would seem that uh, people are also letting us know that they've been resolved. Um, there is some in and out of the sound quality. Um, we're using an Ethernet cable here, so, I, you know, I don't know what else we could do. I, I'm getting a message about low bandwidth from time to time. But at any rate, um, hang in there. All the slides and everything will be provided to you. And now we're so happy to have Amanda with us from Syracuse. Oop, hold on. You're muted. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, try it now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, thanks, Pat. Um, so I want to get into a little bit more about the specifics of the benchmarking process related to the Clean Energy Communities Program uh, specifically. Um, so next slide. The first step, uh, if you decide to consider benchmarking, is to realize the importance of benchmarking. So beyond uh, just uh, 
checking off one of those action items for the Clean Energy Communities Program. Benchmarking is an important step that a municipality can take um, so that they can get a sense of how their buildings are using energy um, and therefore be able to plan for future projects, for energy efficiency projects um, or renewable energy projects in their buildings in the future and be able to prioritize, you know, which buildings need the updates the, the soonest. Um, not only that, but uh, with the portfolio manager tool, there is the ability to connect to other software programs that may um, be used in future energy efficiency or renewable energy projects. Um, so if you start off by benchmarking in Portfolio Manager, it could be helpful to you in the future. Um, the Portfolio Manager also has uh, the ability to kind of calculate energy savings through projects you may be considering. Um, so that's a good way to see how certain projects may affect your energy use in the future. So once you realize that you do want to move forward with benchmarking, uh, the next step is to determine which buildings uh, need to be benchmarked. So as Robin mentioned at the beginning, you do have some kind of wiggle room here. Um, for municipalities under a population of 40,000, uh, you're looking at municipal buildings over 1,000 square feet. And then the larger communities, uh, you're also adding into that mix uh, the commercial buildings over 25,000 square feet. However, um, you know, say you're a municipality who has a couple hundred buildings um, that, that are over 1,000 square feet, you may decide some of those buildings you don't want to benchmark. Um, for example, if you have buildings that are rarely used or you know, have really low energy uses per year, you may want to exclude them just so you're not you know, benchmarking buildings that you really can't do much about um, as far as improving the energy use there. Um, as long as you have a consistent uh, method for determining which buildings you will be benchmarking and you input that information in your local law or resolution or ordinance, then uh, it's still acceptable through NYSERDA for the Clean Energy Communities Program um, that, that you have some exclusions for, for buildings benchmarked. Um, if you're a smaller community with you know, a couple buildings total that you'd have to be benchmarking, you might want to just benchmark all of them, um, even if you have one that's, that's really low energy use. But, um, but like I said, there's wiggle room there. It's, it's, you can discuss it with your clean energy community coordinator and determine what's the best for your community. Um, and then once you've determined which buildings you will be benchmarking, the next step is to gather the necessary data for portfolio manager. So Juan mentioned the, the um, different pieces of data that you need for a portfolio manager. Um, specific to the clean energy communities program, you just need to collect the energy use data and the additional pieces of building data, um, such as the, the, the age of the building and the square footage of the building and some operational pieces about the building. Um, the good thing is you only have to input those operational pieces the first year. Uh, future years, you'll only have to input the energy use data from your energy bills. Um, energy use data has been uh, a little bit trickier in some cases to gather. Um, so there, there's a couple of different ways that you could go about inputting the data into Portfolio Manager, um, one of which is working with your Clean Energy Community Coordinator um, who could help you input the data for the first year. Um, so that's what I have been doing for the most part uh, in, in our region in central New York. But some communities have chosen to do this whole process on their own and just check in with us for if they have any specific questions, which is also a, a fine way to go about this. Um, but as a coordinator helping communities to input the data, um, the energy usage has been the most challenging to gather that, that information. Um, some, some ways to get around this, I know some communities have um, their energy bills just in hard copies in some back room they, they have to sort through to find the correct bills that we need for that year-long um, period. So an easier way to go about this, it, it could be really helpful to have a login for your utility created online. 
Um, I know it's not that difficult of a process in most cases to just create that online login and um, either work through that to have all of your bills right in front of you or um, to provide that login to your coordinator to, to work through. Um, another way if you're working with the coordinator is to provide them with a letter of authorization um, so that they can discuss, uh, contact the utility directly for electronic copies of your bills um, in case you don't have them readily available uh, and easy to transmit to your coordinator if they're helping you with this. Um, those are some ways that I've found have been really helpful um, gathering the energy use data. For the additional pieces of information, um, it's a little trickier because each building usage type in Portfolio Manager requires a little bit different pieces of information. Um, so to get around this, I have created a data gathering spreadsheet, uh, which should have been available when you first signed into this webinar and will also be uh, distributed by Pat uh, after the webinar in a follow-up email. Um, the data gathering spreadsheet can be really helpful both to the community if they're benchmarking on their own or to the coordinator if they're helping the community to input the data for the first year. Um, what, what's in a spreadsheet is uh, different tabs based on uh, most common municipal building use types uh, and the required data that you need for each of those so that you can kind of go through and gather all of that data ahead of time before you start working within Portfolio Manager and then realizing that you need all of these other pieces of data and, you know, it's just a lot easier if you have all of the data gathered ahead of time. Um, and the spreadsheet's a good way to do that and stay organized with what you have and what you need. Um, it's also important to notice uh, that in Portfolio Manager when you're inputting data for a building that has multiple uses, um, there is a multiple use building option, um, but you do need to then uh, input the different types of uses for a building. So for example, if you have a municipal office building that also has a courthouse and a police station uh, within the building, you do have to gather the, the separate um, required information for each of those three building use types uh, broken down by square footage that they're used in the building. Um, so so uh, it's just important to note that you do that when you're first gathering the data to break it down by square footage uh, by the use type. Um, so it's also helpful if, if you are working with just if one person in the municipality is, is doing most of the work for the benchmarking or gathering most of the data for the um, coordinator, it's also helpful to, to have that person distribute the spreadsheet to different um, departments within the municipality. Uh, they, different department heads may have the, the data more readily available than you know, whoever the prime ca contact is or the primary person who's working on the benchmarking. So that's one way to, to get around uh, that issue. Once you have gathered all of the necessary data for Portfolio Manager, the next step is to create your Portfolio Manager account and then input the data. And again, the Clean Energy Community Coordinators are available to assist in this process. Um, I have found that most of the communities in Central New York that I've been working with have wanted me to, um, to do this for them for the first year. Um, just to get it up and running um, for them and then, you know, have an easier process moving forward. Um, so what I have found successful and what other coordinators may want to do uh, working with communities is to create an, a portfolio manager account just for the coordinator um, where I input data from all the municipalities that I'm working with and then I share the municipal buildings with full access to a municipal specific account that I create on behalf of the municipality. And there's a couple of reasons why I do it that way instead of just creating a municipal account. Um, the primary benefit to doing it that way is that you now have your data saved, access to your data saved in two different locations. Um, so just in case the municipal, uh, whoever's working on it at the municipality, if they, if they lose the login information, um, the coordinator still has access to the data. Or if, if the municipality asks you for a question in coming years, you can 
easily access their account and um, you know, answer questions for them. Um, and if you share the information, if the coordinator sh shares the information with full access, then you have the ability to do everything that, um, that the coordinator uh, could do. And you're, you're able to see who input what pieces of data. So it's, it's really transparent in that you'll see if the coordinator input a certain piece of data or if the municipality input the, that piece of data. So that's been really helpful for, for uh, us in Central New York as well. Um, next slide, please. So once you have created your portfolio manager accounts, um, the next step in, in the clean energy community's requirements is to gather and post the required information to the municipal websites. Um, so according to the template resolution and local laws that are available for this action item, um, you're required to post uh, a number of different uh, pieces of data to your municipal website. Um, so you'll see the bottom half of this slide has those requirements. Um, and, and so all of those pieces of data can be easily found on Portfolio Manager once you've input all of your data for your buildings. Um, the only thing is they aren't all located on the same, in the same spot in Portfolio Manager. So I've noted here um, they can be found on the account summary pages in the reporting tab or downloading the entire portfolio. And I've ex I, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the next slide, uh, specifically where to find that data and how to help uh, municipalities find that easier. Um, but at this point, a lot of communities that I've worked with have asked, you know, well, what type, what, what format should this data take on our website? What should it look like? So I have provided a sample benchmarking document for the website, also in the handouts um, that, that you should have uh, seen when you first signed into the webinar and also that Pat will share afterwards. Um, so this is uh, basically just a Word document that has a table with all of the information um, required uh, through the, uh, the template resolution and local law. Um, so that you make sure that you have all of those pieces of data posted to your website um, in accordance to your resolution or local law. Next slide, please. So throughout this whole process, while you're gathering data and creating your portfolio manager um, accounts, uh, the municipality should also be working to pass that benchmarking local law resolution or ordinance um, it's usually not a very intense process. Um, you know, you have to, of course, go through the, the requirements for, you know, if you're doing a local law, um, having that public hearing um, or just passing the resolution at your uh, town or village board meeting. Um, but once that is passed, uh, the, that certified copy of the local law resolution or ordinance will need to be submit to NYSERDA. Um, and usually at this point as the coordinator, I will provide the link to the municipality so they know exactly where to go to submit that documentation. So if you're a municipal representative and you um, aren't sure where to go, just contact your coordinator. Um, and then the, net, the final step, um, if you have been working primarily with a coordinator, um, if the coordinator has uh, input most of the data into Portfolio Manager for you in year one. Um, at this step is where hopefully they'll provide you with instructions for how to update the energy use information in the future years and where to find um, the reporting information that, that is necessary. Um, so to help with this process, I have also uh, provided a third handout with sample benchmarking uh, instructions that I usually put into an email to my uh, municipalities um, so that they have it in writing to refer back to, and now you'll have it in writing to refer to while you're going through this process. Um, what's included in this sample benchmarking email is step-by-step -step information on how to update energy use information, as well as step-by-step uh, -step information on where to find the required reporting information for future years. Um, so hopefully, if you're working with a coordinator, um, if they're doing most of the work for you in, in the first year, hopefully they'll work with you, um, provide you with this information, work with you in the second year in person um, if necessary to, um, you know, 
continue on with year two's energy use data and reporting. And hopefully by year three, you'll be able to do this and, and continue on doing this uh, on your own for future years. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention is the, the screenshot on the right-hand side of this slide is an example of one of the communities that we've worked with in central New York, um, how they have chosen to post the required information to their website. Um, so they have created an energy and sustainability page uh, where they have posted the resolution for benchmarking as well as their first year's energy use um, data from Portfolio Manager. Um, and they've also included on this page, this page other energy and sustainability information from their community like their solar permit um, and their greenhouse gas inventory and climate action plans. So if you're you know, not sure how to post the data uh, to your website, this is one way to do it. And um, you know, it's, I would say it's been probably the most successful way that communities in central New York have chosen to, to go about this process. So um, I would recommend this as well. Uh, and that's everything for me. Thank you very much for having me here. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them at the end. Thank you. Oh, Amanda, thank you so much for that very complete um, overview of your work. Really appreciate it. So our next and uh, last speaker is Jim Yenger of uh, Climate Action Associates. He's going to be speaking from the computer of Robin Reynolds, so don't be confused. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, again, this is Jim Yenger. I'm going to uh, wrap up the uh, presentations today by doing a quick overview of the kinds of services that have already been discussed and then move to a very detailed example of technical support that your coordinators can provide for you based on a real example that we've just uh, completed um, in, the, in the communities. Next slide, please. So quickly to review, the clean energy coordinators are available to provide free optional support to you to help you navigate the clean energy communities program. It is optional and it is uh, incumbent on you to reach out and to make use of those services. Um, we would recommend <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize, I have a little bit of a cough. We would recommend that you be proactive in seeking support from your clean energy community coordinators. They can help you is if you them and are very detailed in, in asking them for what they can do for you. Next. Some of these examples of support have already been covered by Amanda and Robin but the Clean Energy Community Corps can help you pass a marking resolution by helping you navigate the template that's available and customizing it to your local needs. And based on, as Amanda has said, um, they can also help you provide update strategies given the fact that passing the benchmarking resolution is not the end of your journey, it is the beginning. And so good practice will be to update, <clears throat> document how you can update your uh, benchmarking and as well as updating your and managing your portfolio manager account data uh, locations. You can also create a, a summer intern job description um, if you're going to be using the, an intern or other support for your updating. Next slide, please. <coughs> Some of the examples on portfolio portfolio manager support. As reference, we can help you set up your accounts and provision them if you would like that kind of support or as well as help you collect data, uh, review data, um, quality control your data and we're going to provide you a detailed example of that in the next couple of slides on how we've done that. <clears throat> Clean Energy Community Coordinators can also help you over the phone with screen sharing to answer questions and also they can come on site and provide on site training. This often works we found uh, in the previous support program Climate Smart Communities we, we worked on. This works great if you can organize a group of communities together um, and we can come and help and organize a, 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 a non-demand or an on site workshop to go through data with you. <clears throat> we can also do co-piloting on your accounts. As Amanda has referred to, we can have access and help you troubleshoot your data um, sitting behind our desk as well. Next slide, please. One of the aspects that we, we're going to touch upon today is that benchmarking is the beginning of your journey and the intent of benchmarking is to help you begin to track your, your progress and the energy consumption in your buildings. And this touches upon uh, the next high impact action, clean energy upgrades, which is the first opportunity for you to use your portfolio manager account to show how you are making an impact 
on your energy use and greenhouse gas emissions in your portfolio. So for the clean energy upgrades, uh, high impact action, you will have to submit a portfolio manager uh, uh, report documenting your baseline, a clean energy upgrades calculator, and you'll have to show that you have verified that you have reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 10% um, against your baseline with no more than 50% of that coming from renewable energy. What this means, this is your first opportunity to use your portfolio manager account. And for this, the clean energy community support team can help you with the data analysis to do this exercise, to help you find and set your baseline and find the measures that you have already implemented and help you validate if you've met this high impact action. Next slide, please. So we are very pleased to present a tangible example uh, from the village of Wappingers Falls. Um, they implemented Portfolio Manager with the assistance of the Clean Energy Coordinators, as well as documented and demonstrated that they achieved the Clean Energy Upgrades High Impact Action using their Portfolio Manager data. Um, I believe they have either just submitted for this action or will, and as far as we're aware of in our territory, they're the first ones to achieve and submit for the Clean Energy Upgrades Action, so uh, we congratulate them. Next slide, please. So in this example, the village of Wappingers Falls reached out to our, the Clean Energy Coordinators team and asked for assistance to implement Portfolio Manager, as well as document whether or not it has met the requirements for the Clean Energy Upgrades High Impact Action based on two measures that it has done a 250 kilowatt uh, solar array installed at its wastewater treatment plant, and a series of LED lighting upgrades implemented at a variety of its facilities that was performed with a utility program, in this case, Central Hudson's program. Next slide, please. The first step the Clean Energy Coordinator team did is we worked with the village, and in this case, uh, Europa McGovern, one of our Clean Energy Coordinators, went to the village and sat down and began assisting them in collecting and organizing all of the data in a spreadsheet. I call this, having done this many times before an exercise, in which you are sitting together, managing paper bills, digital bills, pulling things into a spreadsheet. It's a bit tedious to do it, sometimes kind of annoying, to be honest. However, it is a very important step in benchmarking. Getting your data together is critical. At this stage, you can also quality control your data. This example, this spreadsheet is from Wappingers Falls, and you can see the yellow uh, cells here are highlighted. Once you get data together, some things may pop out that may be incorrect, and you can start to quality control. Next, please. And I'll show you an example. The little red uh, box that popped up shows you, it's clear in this case there was a cell that was missing some data. The cell after it, in this case, August 2014, looked like it had double the amount of data. So we had to go back and make sure these things are correct, move data back and forth. Sometimes bills may have the previous month's consumption on it or could be entered incorrectly. There's, when you look at this much data, there's many ways that mistakes could happen. It's important to get the data clean now, and I'll show you why. Next. So in this case, the village of Wappingers Falls baseline was actually set, as we'll discuss in the next couple slides, um, between the period of, of August to July. Um, for a couple of reasons, and you'll notice that this baseline actually straddles that error in the cell that we, that we show here. So if we weren't paying attention, and if our goal here is to show that you're reducing emissions against a baseline, probably would not be a good idea to take emissions from the baseline and move them into the, the following year period. So this is just an example of yeah, it's, it's good practice to, to use a fine-tooth comb to go through your data, and your coordinators can help you do that. Next step. Once we helped them organize all of the data in a spreadsheet, we helped them upload it into a portfolio manager, then we just took the data and decided, okay, they want to meeting this high impact action, let's throw the data in some charts and see what it's telling us. This is the first step in letting, it, letting the data tell the story for us. We, we plotted the data, um, we converted the energy consumption for electricity and gas, which is their two primary energy sources, into a standard energy unit, in this case, MMBTU, just for, to, to normalize it. And you can see this chart here, the blue line is natural gas consumption. <clears throat> that seems to be pretty flat, or, or it's got a nice seasonal cycle. It doesn't seem to be changing too much year over year. But if you look at the orange line, that is electricity consumption. It is clearly trending downwards. And that would correspond with the fact that they implemented LED upgrades to impact electricity, as well as the solar um, array would also impact electricity net consumption. So this is telling a story that likely something good is happening here. 
This is <clears throat> next next slide, please. The next step is calculated using portfolio the actual greenhouse gas emissions for these three years. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we set the baseline for the first period um, that you should see here because the uh, the solar array was implemented the month following that. I was meaning to mention that. So in this slide, you can see the black line with the black dots. That is greenhouse gas emissions from portfolio manager. The green bars are is uh, normalized energy consumption in kilowatt hours equivalent. And you can see that greenhouse gases are reducing significantly after the solar array is installed and is far more than 10%. So we know that this story is coming in line. However, we know that we can't say that they've completed this because they can only achieve half of their reductions from renewable energy. And the other half have to come from energy. So we have to move forward and start assessing each of their measures. Next slide, please. Next step is to calculate what the savings requirements would be to meet that the high the clean energy upgrades impact action using the data from measure. So we know from their baseline, which was 167 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions, to achieve a 10% reduction translates exactly into they must show 16.7 metric tons of greenhouse gas savings, which translates into about 92,000 uh, kilowatt hours equivalent of energy use. This is good to know these hard numbers because when you start looking at reports that consultants are giving you for your energy savings, whether it's windows or HVAC upgrades, you can look at those assessments and ballpark and understand if you're going to be close based on the hard numbers you need to get to. In this case, the second bullet shows not only do you need to show around 92,000 uh, kilowatt hours equivalent of savings, only half of that, about 46,000, can be met with renewable energy. Next slide, please. Next step is to evaluate what their actual savings from renewables are. In this case, Wappingers Falls has a solar array that they implemented at their wastewater treatment plant. This is very easy. Fortunately, this system is tracked by NYSERDA directly based on an incentive program that was used to install it. We simply went to the NYSERDA website, downloaded the performance report, and showed clearly that in the first year after it was installed, which is the year after their baseline, it generated 224,000 kilowatt hours of electricity. So we know that the maximum amount they can show to meet the clean energy upgrades action for renewables is only 46,000. So we're very confident that likely this is going to count and is going to meet their requirement under that. <clears throat> this is a more than a 20% reduction in their baseline alone, which is great, great progress uh, made by this village. <clears throat> Next step, please. Next slide. <clears throat> so we think that we're going to uh, make progress with the, with the solar array. The next step is just for good practices to validate this against the actual trend. The green ch chart here, again, the green bars is actual energy use across the full portfolio. And you can see in year two, the actual drop is 229,000 kilowatt hours, which corresponds almost perfectly with the reported production of, this, of the solar facility of 224,000 reported by NYSERDA. It happens at the exact right time, it happens in year two, when we would expect it to happen. This is very good validation that this array is producing exactly what it is doing and is achieving the results that is necessary to show validation for this, for the clean energy upgrades. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, having feel, felt confident that the solar array is doing what it should do, now we have to move on and say, Boppinger's Falls needs to demonstrate that at least an additional 46 thousand kilowatt hours of savings for some potential energy efficiency. That is according to the rules of the program. And so they implemented a series of white rates. We reviewed the reports and the proposals by the Central Hudson team that were generated before they implemented this measure in year two. And you can see here they estimated that roughly 54,000 kilowatt hours would be saved. This is great news. It seems to be on par with what is needed here. And this alone could potentially be submitted as documentation for completing this action. Next step, please. We decided to go one step further to validate this as good practice. So again, went back to the energy trend for the three years that we had to get before. <clears throat> and you can see the top chart, again, is portfolio-wide energy use. It drops in year two because of the solar array. It could a little bit in year three, just a little bit. You can see the greenhouse gas emissions are going down. But 
It's not clear. It could be because of the LEDs. But again, the signal could be masked because the solar array is there. The solar production could be up or down. So again, we just wanted to verify that things made sense. So what we did is we recalculated energy consumption, taking out the wastewater treatment plant with the solar array. That's the blue chart down below. And you can see here now the energy consumption of the total portfolio without the wastewater treatment plant is now dropping in year three, which corresponds to exactly when the LED measures were done, and it drops by 58,000 kilowatt hours, which matches again almost perfectly with what Central Hudson predicted that should be the result of this measure. Again, because it's timed perfectly in year three and the quantity is what we expect, we can safely conclude at this point likely this measure has met, <coughs> in this case, the required amount of savings necessary to achieve the high impact action. Next step, please. The final step in this support was to document all of this. The clean energy upgrades high impact action requires not only a portfolio manager report, a clean energy upgrades calculator, it requires a separate report or documentation to show that you have met this clean energy upgrade action. We took all of the slides that you've just seen, condensed them down into a report, presented it to the village, they reviewed it, and we believe they're now going to submit that as part of their application package. And again, I would like to say, for all of those who are doing benchmarking, I would strongly encourage you to consider pursuing the Clean Energy Upgrades action. Uh, it, you may find out going through the exercise that we just went through that you have already achieved uh, this action or are very close to it by just following a series of steps that I've outlined here um, to help you move on and move on your way. Next slide, please. With that, I'd like to conclude and thank you for the opportunity. And again, please reach out to your coordinators. There's a lot we can help you with and we look forward to uh, providing your assistance. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. And to Robin, uh, Amanda, and Juan, thank you. You too. So I'm going to uh, you to the extent I can, or you can unmute yourselves. I'm talking about Amanda and uh, Juan. Uh, that would be great because we do have you there. Thank you. Uh, we do have some questions. Um, Rashonda, you've been picking some up too, right? But yeah, I think we probably see the same things. So you can, if I miss something, you can tell me about it. So um, before we launch into the, the ones I have here, I wanted to open it up to any of the four of you. Um, you know, you gave such uh, terrific comprehensive remarks. Uh, many of us, though, are working with communities that are really resource uh, trapped. And so, you know, let's just recap for those small communities who may need to rely on interns, for example, to help kick off something like this. You know, what are the key elements of getting started and not getting overwhelmed by the, uh, the, the beginnings of a benchmarking process? I'll open it to Robin. Sure. Um, in my opinion, um, getting started, the, the best thing to do is, uh, as Amanda pointed out, to try and just gather your energy bills and your energy data. That's kind of step number one if you play um, because you would kind of like to adjust resolution and, and set the for benchmarking in accordance with the resolution. And other communities uh, like to kind of get all their ducks in a row before adopting the resolution thinking the process. So um, I think, you know, for a community that is using an intern, um, getting the intern familiar with which departments might have uh, different sources of information or, you know, if you're going to, if you're a very small community and you're going to be working with the, the town clerk or uh, the village clerk, just kind of getting the folks internally on board with providing that information is really important. Um, and then, you know, as Amanda kind of pointed out, and as she has a resource to share with us all, um, having a good way to organize that data so that the intern or whoever is working on it, you know, knows what they're looking at and where to kind of enter in is, is a very important part of this process. So um, I think for the smaller communities that only have a couple buildings, it's a lot more straightforward than some of the larger communities which have uh, a number of buildings. But, um, you know, I think, yeah, getting, getting the data organized before you start with EPA portfolio manager is, is a pretty important first step. Okay. And if I could um, add, please. this is Amanda, if I could add something to that, um, I would also say for communities that are more resource strapped, um, if you work with your coordinators in year one and have them set up the portfolio manager accounts for you, you in future years you will really have minimal work inputting the energy use data. Um, so all you'll have to do in future years is 
gather your energy bills for that year for you know the buildings over a thousand square feet. Um, so it, it, and inputting the energy bills is really easy to do and shouldn't take very long. So um, I would say the hardest part is setting up the accounts themselves, which you can always reach out to your coordinators to assist with. I think from what I see from the industry and stuff and other um, building managers is that everybody should have their own account and uh, you should practice. I mean, a lot of practice, you make mistakes, you could correct them. Uh, it just takes practice. And it's a very simple tool to use in that sense that you could fix the mistakes quickly and then come back and edit it. Or if you don't know the complete information, you don't have to have it on hand right there, but you could come back and flag it and then uh, enter that information when you know it. Uh, that's the correct information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thank you. Um, Michael Maravilla asks uh, if you could recap again how much is available to counties? Um, is the question essentially how much funding is available? I believe so. It was an early question that yep. came in. If yep. your county is over 40,000 in population, which I realize that there are counties in New York that aren't over 40,000 in population, um, you would have access to up to $250,000 worth of funding. So it doesn't necessarily depend on the type of government, it just depends on the population threshold. Right. Okay. Very good. Um, and I know people have been hopping in and out of the webinar, which is perfectly uh, normal. So just to recap, what I've said a few times is, you know, we're going to send um, the handouts that uh, Amanda pr uh, prepared, and I have an overview of everything we're talking about. Uh, let's see, somebody else just sent a question, but I want to go back to the one I saw before. Um, Carla Castillo was wondering about your Zippy graphics. Uh, did that come straight in step three, uh, Jim? Did that come out of Portfolio Manager? Uh, no, we, we prepared that with the, uh, the raw data Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the reports that you're going to have to do for the energy upgrades uh, it, uh, action will we'll likely all have to do with your spreadsheets. Um, we're working on designing some reports for Portfolio Manager to help support that action, but right now there aren't canned reports that can show you or help you, you know, show you exactly that you've met the action in the way that it's described. Mm -hmm. So it's an advantage if you have your data in a spreadsheet and you're uploading it. It's good to have it there too in a spreadsheet as well as in Portfolio Manager. All right. Uh, uh, let's see. I just saw a new question come in. Nancy Bernstein, what building use should be selected for a municipal highway garage which stores and repairs highway vehicles? Um, in, in that case, it would be ener any energy use that the facility is using, electricity, gas, fuel oil, propane for heating. Um, I think she's referring to in portfolio manager, you have to choose the building use type. Um, for this, this might be a better question answered by Juan, but what I have been doing for that type of building, municipal highway garages, um, which store uh, store and repair vehicles, um, there's a there's a public uh, use type uh, other, and and since it doesn't this this type of building doesn't really fall into a, another. Um, use type, that's what I've been using, the other function, which Juan, maybe you can let us know if that's the yeah, correct. I think, yeah, that, that works. That's the reason why it's there. That's a good option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't see, Rashonda, do you see any questions that I've missed? Okay. You want to read it? You'll be on speaker in here. This is our very helpful Siena College intern, Rashonda Jones. Giving a list of buildings. I don't think they can hear you. So, so tell me again. Say it a little louder. Be, yeah, that's building, right? Mm -hmm. Giving a list of buildings one listed that might be benchmarked in requirements that small towns only need to include municipal buildings can be given to 
spoil them at your account or at these other buildings, many of which are private. Hmm. Juan, could you hear that? Did it come did it come in privately or can can the group see it? It's on the Q and A. So Juan, if you look on the Q and A, you can see it there, I think. It looks like it would be for you. Oh, here we go. I, I got it now. Oh, uh, yeah. I got it. Given the list, yeah, I'm just going to read it because I'm closer to the speaker. So given the list of buildings that Juan listed that might be benchmarked and requirements that small towns only need to include their muni buildings, can a given portfolio manager account include or add these other buildings, many of which are private? Huh. Good question. That's, so that's Juan, like a nice, that's a nice sort of question. I think they only want their municipal buildings. Uh, I think that's a nice sort of question. That's not yeah, a, they are looking specifically for the small communities to ju to just benchmark buildings over a thousand square feet as the requirement. But I know if a if a municipality has a building under a thousand square feet that they would like to include in the benchmarking for one reason or another, um, there's no problem. You you can include it. Um, it's it's just not part of the requirements as far as. Um, private buildings, I don't know how that would work um, just because usually private buildings would have to have their own private portfolio manager account, so it wouldn't necessarily um, be entered in the same account as the municipal buildings. Um, just because municipalities don't usually have access to the energy bills and information for those private buildings. The only other scenario I can think is if a municipality is leasing space from a private building, I think that's a question for NYSERDA, uh, if it's the space is large enough, if it's still in a private building. I think NYSERDA sh should be able to answer that. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Before I get to the next substantive question, I just want to repeat, yes, we are sending the slides to everyone. That's always our most popular question. And um, Elizabeth Thomas asks, I thought I read that the municipality had to pass a local law, not simply a resolution. A resolution would be much easier. Can you confirm? Yep. Yes, NYSERDA has um, originally came out in the pond that it would have to be a local law, but they have since changed their tune to allow resolutions as well. Great. Uh, David Turner asks, how far back can you go to set your base baseline? Um, if this question is in regards to you know, baseline, you know, baseline um, in that particular case, the, uh, the, the measures that you have to document have to be after 2014, and you have to show a baseline that occurs at least 12 months before that. So the earliest you can go back would be 2013 for a baseline for that specific program. Of course, if you're doing baselining for a climate plan or anything else, you can go back to as far as you want. But in that case, 2013 would be your, your limit. Okay. And, and um, Sorry, can I just add something to that? For the yeah. benchmarking action item specifically, um, NYSERDA doesn't have a, a, a year, you know, you can't go past a certain year. But it's kind of understood that if you're benchmarking as one of your clean energy community action items, you would want to do the most recent year. Um, so what we've been doing is primarily either 2015 or 2016 as the, the baseline year. Um, and if I could add just one more thing, if you're trying to set up your benchmarking program for it this year, you could even potentially do kind of like the next year as your first reporting year. So you could potentially start benchmarking in 2017 and report it in early 2018, but just, just another option. And Michael Maravilla asks, there is no local cost share at all. Is that right? Correct. There is no local cost share, although if you look in the project criteria, which is on page 17 of the program guidance document on the Clean Energy Community Program website, um, you would get a little extra um, points on the evaluation criteria that has to do with leveraging funds uh, if there is a local cost share provided if, or if there's kind of other funds going into the project. Um, but you're right in that no local cost share is required under this program. 
Okay, let's see. Um, Christina asked, there was a slide that showed an example, um, that showed example, the department separately reports your data, energy rating, also if in compliance with reporting and other, what is the department, the DEC in this case? I'll reread it. There was a slide that showed an example uh, that referenced the department separately reports your data and your energy rating if in compliance with reporting. And she's asking if the department refers to the DEC or what? Amanda, might this be one of your slides? I, this is not one of my slides. I think this may be in reference to the Energy Star score that Juan talked about. Um, I, I don't think it has anything to do with what I was talking about, but I think, so one of the um, pieces of data that Portfolio Manager can um, provide is an Energy Star score. Um, so that, I think that's where it talked about that the department will give you that rating if it's available based on the information you provided within Portfolio Manager. Right. Um, so there's only a couple, you go a couple of slides back, there's only certain types of buildings that get an energy star score from 1 to 100. And uh, a couple, there you go, that slide. These are the only buildings that could rate, have that rating for 1 to 100 score. And you're benchmarking yourself across uh, all national buildings across the country. So if any of the buildings that your municipality might have fall into this category, then they could get a score from 1 to 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see, Peter Bardoglio uh, would like to just let people know that Ithaca has established the first 2030 district in New York. It's part of a national network, and they're working with commercial building owners to benchmark energy and water performance of buildings in the district. Yay, Ithaca. <laughs> We're not surprised. After all, you're Ithaca. <laughs> And he gives a website, which he probably put out to the whole audience here. Um, and you can contact him at pbardoglio at gmail.com. All right. So that is terrific. And um, the very first question that came into the webinar before we got started was directed toward uh, Juan. And uh, Juan, let me just preface this by saying that a ex perfectly acceptable answer would be, I have no idea. Um, but the question was if, if you could say anything um, that you might know about the future of your agency. Yeah, there's nothing I, could, I know right now. I can't speak to that. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. All right. Well, we're, we're rooting for you. Um, you. We're going we're gonna to end right on time. Oh, wait a minute. New, new question. Help me understand, says Peter Newsom, the rationale for only allowing 50% of the greenhouse gas reduction attribution to renewables. <laughs> That's something that NYSERDA will have to answer for you, but um, I think generally they decided that they wanted to primarily, um, well, be able to see at least some energy efficiency um, actions in combination with renewables as opposed to just renewables. But again, that's something NYSERDA decided, um, so you'd have to ask them. Yeah, I'd have to uh, agree with you, Amanda. I think you know, generally the trajectory is that a community would want to, and, and anyone, a homeowner, a commercial building owner, would want to uh, have energy efficiency upgrades be the first step prior to renewable energy. So um, I think that that was the general thought on that action item, is that you know, going, going forward and using available programs for energy efficiency prior to looking into renewables is, is a good and effective pathway. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more of a high level, nice sort of question than something we can answer today. All right, and a final question from David Bradford. Can the baseline year in project manager, I mean, um, yeah, portfolio manager, uh, be changed? Can the baseline year be Yeah, changed? the year of the baseline could be changed. You would have to go there's a certain setting that you can set the, which baseline you want. Is it the past 12 months or you go further behind, further prior years to that? So it depends on it. Usually the, the tool itself will pick the first 12 months that you input of energy data to pick that as a baseline. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but it needs 12 months to create a baseline. Right, right, okay. Well, thank you everyone. These have been excellent uh, questions and we really appreciate your enthusiastic participation in this um, a great deal. And you'll be hearing more from us because this is a series of webinars that we're doing through the, um, through the life of the clean energy community. So thank you all very much for coming and we will be sending out the slides, the handouts, and anything else we think you need. All right, thank you and until we meet again, bye-bye. Thank you.